It was an old... Um, it was built in like the 1850s, so mm-hmm. Ecuadorian-style prison, very similar to the ones in, in, in Britain, the Ecuadorian, you know, like uh, Wandsworth or, oh, okay, or yeah. Britain, you know, with the yeah. centre and the wings coming off it. Yeah. So it was, a, it was very much styled around that sort of type of prison. Um, and luckily I'd fallen in with a bunch of Arabs who all spoke English when I got arrested. Okay. So they were quite well respected out there. Um, what were they in for? Same thing? Terrorism and drug okay. trafficking. They were funding Hezbollah. With oh, wow. Sending cocaine out there. I remember mm. reading about the case in the Guardian newspaper before oh. I even went to Ecuador. Yeah, and then you ended up meeting them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ended up meeting them. Like, they were actually a nice bunch of guys. <laughs> but one yeah. of them was, was married, to, still is married, to the... the uh, that time he was the vice president Lenin Moreno. Mm. He the guy was married to the niece of the vice president. Wow. So and she was arrested as well. So I got to know her. She spoke English and mm. she obviously was in the cells with my girlfriend, so they mm. became friends. And uh she actually looked after my girlfriend. Um mm. For some of the time that she was in. Yeah. And obviously very well respected. And I'm assuming being on terrorist charges they were they were lifers, weren't they? No, 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 was, they, they, yeah. they, they all ended up getting, you know, money towards oh, so the beat the case, yeah. And obviously having friends in the government and whatnot, mm. you know. They didn't beat the case, but they all got sentenced to like 8 and 12 when they yeah. should have probably got 25s and whatnot. Yeah. And, um, but being with them was handy because obviously they were quite well respected and feared. Mm. So, uh you know, went through the remand centre, which we only stayed in a couple of weeks, bribed our way straight through to the prison. Mm where we had cells waiting for us, we bought, you had to buy your own cell out there. We, well, you could yeah. buy your own cell. It's about two well, you grand. you in general population. Yeah. yeah, so you, you know, buy a cell, do it up, you could have whatever you wanted in it, TV, air con, mm. uh, you should own shower in there, phone, computer, yeah. I mean, whatever you wanted, satellite TV. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah it was well, very, money talks, as they say, so yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming that you would be able so to. So, the, the first wing that went into was mainly foreigners, which was quite mm. good. Um, so, I ended up more or less taking that wing over, started mm. running things. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> with, um, with, with the Arab friends that you just made now? Yeah, yeah. basically, yeah. yeah. One of them was in charge of the wing, so mm. I ended up taking over some other sides of it he didn't really like that yeah. so we ended up having a bit of disagreement but what, what does taking charge of, um, like what does it entail um, what, I, well, I just sort of I ended up forming up a group of foreigners around us mm. uh, around me just to, so that we had a bit of strength as well mm. so that we couldn't be uh, um, extorted mm. or taken advantage of yeah because as known South American prisons are usually run by the prisoners yeah, and the gangs exactly. aren't they yeah. Yeah. Quito wasn't too bad in that respect because mm. each the Colombians seem to have a wing to themselves, the Ecuadorians seem to have a wing to themselves, and us foreigners seem to have our own wing. So, okay. I, yeah. you know, I just made the best out of it. So, formed our own little, I call it Euro Banda. Because <laughs> <laughs> so Banda, Banda is like the word for gang out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, we were the European gang. Yeah. <laughs> um, started bringing in our own drugs. So you, you started selling in, in the prison yeah, now? Yeah, because I thought, well, I'll offset the cost again mm. of. Um, you know, life in prison because it was it's all cash in there. Mm. Um, and how easy is it to get drugs into the prison? Oh, very easy. Just pay the guard to you bring it in on visits because the visits that came into the wing, mm. and okay. every so all day Wednesday, all day Saturday, and all day Sunday, that your visits were in in the wing with mm. you in your cell. Mm. Uh, so you could you could chuck the rest of the people out in your cell, have your girlfriend in the room, have sex, do whatever mm. you wanted. Yeah. So, I mean, so three days out of the week, your family and friends and girlfriend were in there with you. Oh wow! And every other Saturday, they could stay overnight with you. Serious? Yeah. To yeah. begin with. Yeah. That was what it was like for about the first two years in Quito. So mm. it was, it was just a twenty four seven party in there. Loads wow. of alcohol. Johnny Walker, six and drugs, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drugs. <laughs> women, just... prostitutes. Wow. I mean, it's just nuts. Whatever you wanted, I used to get loads of bags of shopping brought in. So we were living. Yeah. Was it was a lot of violence in this particular prison? And how long, yeah, how long was you there for in Quito? I was I was there two years because I tried to escape. Oh, you tried to escape from Quito? Yeah, I tried to dig a tunnel out there. We were talking no about way. blowing the wall with an RPG with some what? Colombian friends. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I need to yeah, hear the story. Yeah. How did that come about? So I ended up becoming very good friends with some guys from the FARC. Mm. Uh, Colombian guys yeah. because they were the guys that we got to bring the coke in for us so mm. we formed up a little clique whereby we were they would bring the coke in we were we were selling it on, on the wing for the foreigners mm. and they were selling it on the wing for the Colombians so we became very close and I'm literally 
I'll be speaking to the guy later today. Mm. Um, this guy called Mario, who yeah, just hit it off big time mm. and decided that you know we would watch each other's backs because sometimes there would be things, there'd be a strike in the prison mm. where the prisoners, if they were unhappy about something, they would literally just chain the gates, throw all the guards out, wow. and then it would become time. lawless and it would become pretty scary because yeah. then if anybody had a problem with anyone else, That's the then time they to get would get killed. Yeah. The, the guns would come out, the machetes, um, yeah. you know, and then problems would be dealt with and quickly. Mm. So it was nice to have a little bit of backup in there. Mm. So we had our own gun. We got a couple you of had a gun in your cell? Yeah. 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 And well, this was all brought in by... Yeah, well, I, I tended, we had one gun in, in our cell and the Columbians had another in theirs. Mm. So as soon as it was a strike, they'd come straight for me. Oh, okay. I'd have my friends, the European friends around us. Yeah. And then we'd, we'd just form up and we'd have, a, you know, about 20 of us. A little huddle, yeah. So, yeah. So, it's, you know, things are going quite well in Quito. We're making money. We're doing, organising things by phone. Mm. and Yeah, it's just, you know, living quite a good life. I end up getting together with a girl from Manchester. Well, was she in prison? No, in, we, no. We, we, we started doing a tour guide thing mm. in the prison. So, oh, okay. Uh, tourists, cause, cause, because people could come into the prison, into the wing, mm. we hit off on this idea of, well, you know, we'll put some flyers up in all the, in all the hotels and mm. uh, uh, hostels saying, come into the prison and you have a little tour. And through that, you find a girlfriend? Yeah, <laughs> so I found a few. <laughs> because well, obviously as well, because they could stay in... in it, it was yeah. it was any woman or, or they could stay with you wow. overnight this uh, every other week. So if if they came in on that particular Saturday, mm. I would say to them, look, mm. you've you, you've hit it lucky. Basically, you have the chance now mm. to stay in a South American prison in mm. the cell with an international drug trafficker <laughs> overnight, <laughs> and <laughs> you get to leave in the morning. You can walk out the door the next morning. The, well, the, there is the theory that people do fall in love with like people yeah, who've yeah, committed yeah. extreme violent crimes or like gangsters or something. Yeah, there's Females definitely do have a draw that. too. <laughs> and girls used to love just wanting to stay yeah, in the cells. Yeah, yeah. Really. So, yeah. so quite often I'd have like, I'd have like two or three girls <laughs> staying overnight. Australians, British, wow. Americans, Canadians, all, all sorts of Israelis. Yeah. And then it comes along this girl from Manchester who yeah, I just became very friendly with and mm. she ended, uh, ended up staying in Ecuador for six months we kept renewing her visa and wow. just you know girlfriend boyfriend came in every visit day yeah. would stay over just yeah completely fell in love it was That's great crazy. Uh, obviously came a day where she couldn't renew her visa and suddenly yeah. she had to leave wow. still in, I'm still in contact with her to yeah. this day but, you know she's married now with a 